have to restart the recording. So we're going to be graphing those, graphing more parabolas. But this time, instead of just moving from side to side along the x-axis and then up and down, what's going to happen is um, that these are going to stretch and contract. They, in other words, get wider and get smaller. Unlike the other things that we've looked at, the reflections and the translations, it really doesn't tell you that much about where the parabola is going to be when you graph it. But it will tell you that it's going to be wider or narrower. So it'll give you an idea that um, of, of uh, what your parabola should look like, at least. You're still going to have to fill, uh, do the math and fill in the chart, plot the points, and then go from there. Okay? Now, remember that they're symmetrical, right? So when you do fill in the points... Say, for example, let me get some graph paper going up here. So let's say that we have a, a point here, a point there, and a point there, right? We know if this is, if this is the middle of the parabola, that if that one's two, two, away from, two units away, then that one's two units away across, right across. That one's three units away, that one's three units away. So remember that idea that they're symmetrical. And we're going, to exp we're going to talk a little bit more about that today as well, okay? So you don't have to do every single point, right? Because you're going, to, you're going to get repetition. So we'll talk about that as well. Okay, so let's go to the book pages so that I can show you what I mean, okay? All right. <laughs> Sorry, Ella, I just dropped you off there. So, okay, so so far what we've done is looked at graphs where the number in front of the x squared was either a 1 or a negative 1. So you had, like, just okay, so just plotting those points and graphing it. Now, again, this doesn't really help you that much as far as actually graphing a parabola, but it gives you an idea of what it should look like. So what's happening is 2 times your x squared is making these points twice as big as they would have been. Because if it was just 3 squared, it would have been 9, right? But that was 9 times 2, which that's why it's 18. Okay? So a little logic there. All right. Looking at the one where we have this one, it has a 1 half in front of it. But 1 half is less than 1. So look at what's happening. It's the solid line that they're graphing. It's showing you that that line is actually wider than the standard graph. So what's happening is you're have taking half of the number, so it's making the numbers smaller, and smaller numbers, smaller y values tend to tend to make the graph wider. Okay, so they're half the height that they, that they would have been. Okay, now they're going to give you a bunch of things here. E, it's not going to make much uh, difference to you. Some of them we already know. Plus a B moves the graph to the left. So remember, the, the thing inside is the thing that moves it left or right, and it's the opposite of what you would think. So if it's the B is positive, it's going to move it left. If it's negative, it's going to move it right. Then your C is that thing that moves it either up or down up, across the Y, I'm sorry, the X axis. Positive moves it up. Negative moves it down. Remember, if the x is negative, that first term is negative, that reflects it across. In other words, it turns it upside down. So if you have a minus x squared, that means your parabola is going to open downward, right? That was the last lesson that we did. Okay. And then here is that newest information. If a is greater than 1, it's stretched vertically, so it gets longer and narrower. If it's between 0 and 1, it's stretched horizontally. In other words, it gets wider. Again, I um, cannot think of a reason why that would be important to you. The reason we're going through this, you'll see in just a moment, though. Okay? So first of all, we're just going to draft some your homework. You're just going to be plotting some points and then drawing the graph. So draw the graph of y equals negative 1 fourth x minus 3. Well, the x minus 3, remember, we know that that means that you're going to get either the graph, the, the turning point of the graph is going to move 
from to the left or right. And since it's minus three, when you pull it away from the x, it's gonna turn it into a positive three. And a positive three gives you, moves it across three places to the right. Yeah? So if it looks negative, it actually is gonna move it to the right because when you pull it away from the x, it's just like solving an equation. So what happens is it turns it into a, into a positive, which moves it to the right, okay? So that was something that we've done in the past. We also see that this particular graph, the number in front of the parentheses is negative. And if that number is negative, that means it's going to make the parabola open down, right? So watch out for negatives. We know that a negative in front is going to make the thing open downward. So that reflects it across the x-axis. So those two pieces are the same as they were. Then they've simply gone through and plugged in some numbers to be able to get some, uh, some values to plot to draw the parabola. Because you need at least, you need at least uh, two or three values so that you can be able to draw the parabola and see what's happening. Because that number is negative one-fourth, again, the negative made it open downwards, but one-fourth means that it stretched it out and made it wider, kind of fatter, okay? Now, they did a lot of points here. Do you see all those points? You don't need all that many points, but of course, they're gonna give you a chart. You don't get a choice. Um, later, when you're graphing these, we're going to look at a very efficient, quick way of graphing these, um, but, for now, they want you to use the chart and fill in the numbers. It's not going to hurt you because it does help to maintain those algebra skills as well. Okay? How's that looking so far? Good. Good? So it's pretty much just the same thing we were doing. Okay? Good. So here again, they do another one. Because we have that 2 in front, it's positive, so that means it's going to be opening upward. The 2 is going to make it longer and skinnier. X plus one means that it's going to move to the left one, right? So let's show you that one. So this plus one is what made it move over, made the middle of it move over there. And minus three means it went down three. So that's how we know where our turning point is, right? Those two pieces of information will tell us where our turning point is. And then we just have to fill in numbers to do the rest. So all they're doing is, in place of the x, they're putting that number and then doing the math. So 2 times 4 squared minus 3. 4 squared is 16. 2 times 16 is 32 minus 3 gives us the 29. And that's where they got that 29. So did this plugging in that x value into the equation and solving it to find out what y is going to be. So just exactly what we did before, all right? It's just that the math is getting a little more complex now. There's a little bit more to it, okay? All right, now, and if you look at this one, if you're look, looking, this, there's a misprint here because <laughs> it says the, this time the y-intercept has changed from negative nine to negative one, negative one. It was actually at negative, two, it was negative one, okay? And it, I'm sorry, yeah, it was changed to negative four, I'm sorry. Changed from negative one to negative four. You see that? Or negative three, I'm sorry, there it is. So it was at negative three. I've written negative two there, that's wrong. <laughs> hmm. It was here at negative three. Now it's there at negative two. So that's a misprint. If you're reading, if you're one of those like me who reads thinking, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. That's a, a misprint for you. So here's the homework. You're going to just complete the gra tables and draw the graphs of the equations. Okay? They give you the values, but notice that that's a positive one, that's a negative one. So what's going to happen here? At both of those points, you're going to get what? exactly the same number, right? Because there's some, yeah. So you're gonna get the exact same number there and there, okay? So 
if you do, and that's always going to happen uh, when they're symmetrical. So three, so for example, if you do zero, y equals, because there is no plus c minus, or plus b minus c business going on. So that tells you that it's that, that the turning point is going to stay right in the center because it doesn't have any of that extra stuff that the others had. And so if the turning point stays in the center and it's also positive, which means it's going to open upward, right? All you have to do is find out where. So that's gonna be the point zero, zero. So one, if you put in y equals one fourth times one squared, that's y equals one fourth times one. So y equals one fourth. Well, if you do the negative one, y equals one fourth times negative one squared, that becomes y equals one fourth times positive one because negative one squared just makes positive one. So this one is also one fourth. So you're gonna see that you're getting the same values because this because of the, the way they're symmetrical, you're gonna get the same values. Now, obviously this is not where the graph is going. So one, one fourth would be over one, up one fourth, so some weird place like that, okay? And again, the best, and then it's gonna have another point on the other side just like that at negative one, one fourth. When they're giving you fractions like this, the best you can do is just kind of put it where you think it should be. Mine, this one actually looks more like one half than one fourth, but so bring it down a little bit. Then once you have enough points, you can draw your graph, but make sure you do all of them, okay? Do the whole chart, right? Now, here again, we have the same one, but this one is negative, so this one's going to be opening down. They give you a little bit of a clue to that because they didn't give you enough graph to go upwards, so <laughs> that's down. Um, they shouldn't do that, I wish they wouldn't, okay? This one, the neg the x squared is negative, so again, that's gonna be opening down, but look what happens. They didn't give you any values. So if they don't give you any values, then what can you conclude? Anybody? You still there? <laughs> Hello? Well, if they don't give you any... Okay, there you are. You scared me. I thought you had all disappeared or something. Okay. <laughs> so if they don't give you any values, then you can just choose values of your own. Okay. And it doesn't matter what values you choose, but since you're multiplying by one half, I might choose numbers that divide evenly by two because multiplying by one half is the same as divide by two. So zero, definitely choose zero. Then I would choose two, four, and six. Then go down here and choose negative two, negative four, negative six. Now, you don't have to. You can choose any numbers you want to because again, remember, these have an infinite number of solutions, so any numbers will work, okay? Now, when you choose the numbers beforehand, because this one has that plus six, that means it's going to have a, that means it's gonna move um, up six. So if you choose the numbers beforehand, you might only get part of the parabola. In other words, so let's say uh, we only get this much of it. Well, that's no big deal though, because if it goes through that point, then it goes through that point. So don't, you don't have to cho keep choosing more points, but you can, okay? All right, so if they don't give you points, then you choose, they don't give you X values, then you choose X values and choose any ones you want to. I would, I would always say choose zero um, simply because it's the easiest one because if you choose zero, it makes everything go away, but you don't have to if you don't want to. You pick ones you like, right? So we're moving on. Here's the same thing. We just got more things. It's just got to, it's going to move up one. It's going to move to the right three. That's where our, our vertex is going to be. So if it moves our vertex, remember our turning point is called the vertex. So if it moves up one and then to the right three, that means our vertex is going to be right there. 
So I might choose points, x's, x values to the right and left of that. Okay, so maybe choose 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. I wouldn't choose any negative ones because they're going to be way over here and they're going to fall off your graph. Okay, so if you know where that turning point is, then just pick a couple of points on either side of it. Make sense? Yeah. Excellent. Good. Okay. All right. Now, we've been looking at parabolas where they give it to you in this form, where there's a parentheses and it's squared and then plus a number. We're also going to look at what happens when they give them to you in another form where you have your number in front of, and then two sets of parentheses. This is the factored for, factorized form of a polynomial. So you've all fact, factorized polynomials before, so you've recognized this format where you get one parentheses plus another parentheses. This one comes from a process called completing the square, if you've ever heard of that one before. But this one is the more common one because if you're going to be working with these, it's a lot easier just to use factoring methods to find these, okay? And if they're in this form, there's a couple of, there are a couple of things that we can pull out without having, we don't even really need the chart to be able to graph them, but they're still giving you the chart, so you're going to use the chart, okay? So let's just talk a little bit about this form and what it tells us, okay? So... When you have y equals x plus, and I'm just going to put, they use p and q and I don't care, plus or plus, and x plus q, doesn't really matter, and it's plus or minus, right? You can have either one, doesn't matter which one you have. Then there's a couple of things that you know. That you know. First, set each bracket equal to zero and solve. These are the x-intercepts of the graph of the parabola. And remember, x-intercept, just like the y-intercept, an x-intercept means the places where it crosses the x-axis. So we already know two of the points what, of where, that it's doing, where it's working. Okay? Second, the vertex or turning point is halfway between those two points. So we can find the turning point by simply looking at the, the two points we have and then counting and then dividing it by two. So how far apart are they and divide it by two or simply count it however you want to do it. But sometimes dividing by two is a little easier because it'll turn out to be a fraction or um, so it's a so it's going to be in the middle of two points, but it really doesn't matter. You can do it. Well, I'll show you examples where you do it either way, okay? And if you know those two, those two pieces of information, then all you need, they're going to give you, they're going to make you put in some extra points, but really you don't need them um, because you can, you can draw your parabola from just that information, okay? But I'm going to put in the extra points because it's in the homework And um, so they want you to find them. And to get the extra points, just choose any x values. And of course, you want to pick some that are on either side of the, uh, of the turning point, and maybe even that are outside of the x-intercepts. 
and we'll look at what that looks like. It's really a very simple process. So you're just going to solve each one of those. And remember that when you solve each one of those, there's a pattern for that. You don't even have to show the work for solving it. Okay? You can just do it. Let me show you. Let's go back to the pages and see. So don't worry about all this stuff. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff right there. Don't worry about it. Okay? Now, we're going to look at this method here. And that's what I, I just told you that, but in English. So let's just look at one of them so that you can see what's happening. Uh, don't worry about all that stuff. Here we go. Draw graphs for the following equations. So here we are. First of all, we have x squared and the, and the 2x and the x plus 4. So it's in that factored form. So that's factored form, right? Factorized. Sorry about that. So I'm going to first find the x-intercepts. Well, all I need to do to, for that is to set each one of those equal to zero and then solve it. So we'll solve that one by adding two, gives us x equals two. Solve that one by subtracting four, gives us x equals negative four. And if you want to do that in your head, you're more than welcome to. If you want to take it off to do paper, on paper, that's fine too. Sometimes it, they can be a little more, compl uh, more complex. They can have more terms inside. So so working it out might make sense. So our x-intercepts are positive 2 and negative 4. Those are the places where it crosses the, the x-axis. So at positive 2, it's right there. Negative 4, it's right there. Okay? So that's what it's doing. Notice that there's no sign here, so that means it's positive. So I know that this parabola is... Uh, sometimes I worry about me. This parabola is opening up, right? They want us to find the y-intercept. Well, that's easy. So I've got my x-intercepts. They want us to find the y-intercepts. That's easy because all you need to do is, they, at the y-intercept, that's where x equals 0. So just plug x equals 0 in there, and you'll find it. 0 minus 2 times 0 plus 4 gives you negative 2 times positive 4. In other words, all you end up is doing is multiplying those two numbers together, and you get negative 8. So that means the y-intercept is down there at negative 8. Now, that's not necessarily the turning point, and in this one it is not. Okay. The axis of symmetry, okay, that's that halfway point that I just talked about. The axis of symmetry is the line that cuts the parabola in half. And so that's the thing that's halfway between these two. So these are one, two, three, four, five, six units apart. So the axis of symmetry, six divided by three, I'm sorry, six divided by two gives you three, so there, it's halfway between those two, so three units away from each one of them. So that dotted line. Okay, so the axis of symmetry is that x equals negative 1. Do you see that dotted line? Is it negative 1? So that's our axis. And our turning point is halfway between those, as far down as it'll go. So our turning point we can find by simply looking at where that axis is crossing. We can find some other points ac across. So hold on just one second. Sorry, working from home. All right, sorry, we're back. So our x-intercepts, again, we found those um, two and negative four. Our y-intercept was at negative eight. Our axis of symmetry is x equals negative two. And we're gonna find our turning point by simply plugging that in to the equation and finding out what it's doing at two because we know that our turning point has to be on this dotted line. So whatever x is doing there, that'll tell you the, what, the, what the y is. So it's negative 2 minus 2 times negative 2 plus 4, which gives us negative 4 times positive 2, which is negative 8. OK? Is that right? Negative 4, positive 2, negative 8. Okay, and then here's where they want the extra points. And now you can pick them anywhere you want to. So pick those extra points anywhere you want to. Just choose any x values. So 
we already know that that's an x value. That's an x value, right? Oh, sorry. Do I have this in the wrong? Yeah, that's the wrong point, isn't it? It was x equals negative 1 was the... So my numbers are wrong. Sorry, kids. Not having y'all in class means y'all didn't stop me. So that's negative, so that should be negative three and positive three, so that's negative nine. So it's right there. Could have had to be because that's the x inter that was the y intercept too, wasn't it? So choosing extra points, just pick any extra points you want. Um, it makes no difference. They want two of them, so you could pick any ones that you want. So you could pick x equals one x equals, don't use 2 because it's already there, x equals negative 1, we already know that point, so x equals negative 2. You don't even really need these extra points, they're just a kind of telling you, um, giving you confirmation that you have the graph in the right spot. This will just plug those values in, so 1 minus 2, 1 plus 4 gives you negative 1 times 5, which is negative 5. So y equals negative 5. Then do the same thing with the negative 2. Negative 2 minus 2. Again, all I'm doing is replacing that x value, which gives us negative 4 times 2, which is negative 8. Okay. So right there, uh, 1, negative 5. 1, negative 5 is right there. Okay. And remember, whatever it's doing, so if this is two units away from the line on that side, then it's two units away from the line on that side. If this is one unit, well, that one's already, already marked for you. But now you have more than enough points to easily draw, oops, <laughs> well, not so easily for me, easily draw the parabola. Okay? So you're going to find three points, or three different things that you have to have. The x-intercepts. The y-intercept, and remember, that's just where x equals 0, right? The axis of symmetry, which is halfway between these two points. The turning point, if you know the x value of this axis of symmetry, all you have to do is plug it in to find the y value. And then any two extra points on there. So it may look a little more complex, but it's really not. They're very quick, easy steps that you're going to get used to very quickly if you haven't already. Can somebody tell me what's different about this one, number two? What's going to happen here? It's a negative. It's a negative, so, so that means... It's going to open down. They're exactly right. Okay? There's a negative in front of there, so it's going to open downwards. But other than that, the process is going to stay the same. Right? Let's look at this one simply because it's actually easier than the others, but it messes with students because there is, there's only an X and another parentheses. So this would mean that when you factored it, there was a common factor of X. To find the X-intercepts, you still set them equal to zero, just like you did before. But when you set X equals zero, there's no solving to do, right? So the first intercept is zero. Then X plus six equals zero. Solve that, you get X equals negative six. So my other intercept is negative 6. So I get an intercept at 0 and an intercept at negative 6. Now, <laughs> the way they position the graph on the paper is going to make it clear which direction that should have been. Now, my y-intercept is the point where x equals 0, right? So just plug in 0 for the x's. And you get 0 times 6, which is still 0. So that tells you that the y-intercept is 0, 0. So the y-intercept is also one of the x-intercepts. They can be the same point, okay? But you knew it was also the y-intercept because it's touching the y-axis, right? But So you didn't really even have to do the math for that to find that one, if you're observant. The axis of symmetry is halfway between those. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units. So the act, that's three units between. 
So that's the, x, the axis of symmetry, where x equals negative 3. Now, if I know the x value, all I have to do is plug it in to find the y value. And then I'll know my turning point. So it's negative 3 times negative 3 plus 6, which gives me negative 3 times positive 3, which is negative 9. So that makes it the point negative 3, negative 9. So left 3, down 9. So it's right there. Then they want you to choose some extra points. Now, it doesn't matter what points you choose. I just choose, usually choose the two points that are closest, right and left of the x-axis. But uh, I mean, from the vertex, but you can choose any ones you want to. So you can choose some up here, whatever. It makes no difference, again, where you're picking them. I never even do the extra points because if you look at, at the information that we already have, I know it's going up there, and I know it's going up there. Oops. So I don't even need the extra points to draw the parabola, but they want the extra points, so I expect to see them. So we'll just use negative 4 and negative 2. So that's negative 4, negative 4 plus 6. So negative 4 times 2, which is negative 8. Okay. I'll do this the negative 2, negative 2 times negative 2 plus 6, which is negative 2 times positive 3, which is negative 6. So negative 4, oops, sorry. So negative 4, negative 8 is right there. See, it's on my line. Uh, negative 2, that should have given me 8. What did I do wrong? Oh, <laughs> that's a four. <laughs> I can't multiply. That's what I can't do. All right. Okay. So you see that if you get one, at, if you're picking them, they're, they're always going to be symmetrical. Okay. So the different form is the only thing that's different. Now, this one has a one half in front of it, which means it's going to make it narrower. What does it mean when this one is squared? The parentheses squared. Anybody? Exactly. That means you have two of exactly the same thing. Okay. Now, and what happens when that when that occurs is that when you set them equal to zero, you're going to get exactly the same x-intercept. So that means that you're not going to be able to tell anything from the graph from looking at that looking at the intercepts you can't count halfway between them if they're the same point so your only choice is to simply pick some values okay just use a chart and pick some values so sometimes the shortcut part of this process fails and you just have to go and you just have to resort to the chart but remember, that's why we learned the chart. The, remember, the chart is kind of the workhorse. You could graph all of these only using the chart. Okay? Now, we can still find the turning point, right? By plugging in the x value and then working that out. But, so, but you can find that again by plugging in the points. Okay, so if you get something that's exactly the same, you're, you're going to have to just pick some points and work them out. Okay? All right. So hopefully that's enough to get you through graphing the rest of this, graphing the parabolas. We're going to continue next time looking at more parabolas and... Let me come back to you. get back to you. There we go. So we're going to come back and look at some more ideas about parabolas. Now that we know how those pieces fit together to be able to graph the parabolas and put them and put them onto the graph paper graph, what we'll be doing is we'll start with the graph and we'll work backwards and find the numbers that we need in order to be able to put those back together.
Okay, how does it look? Not too difficult? Okay. Good. Good, good, okay, excellent. So, so that's your homework. We have class again when, tomorrow? Tomorrow, first period. Tomorrow, fifth period, okay. So, first period. First period, okay. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know how much other stuff you have to do. This is a double period. These should go pretty quickly. So let's use, um, and then we, and do we meet again on Friday or no? Does anybody know? Yeah. We meet again on Friday? Or tomorrow is Friday, isn't it? This is Thursday? Yeah. Holy moly, where does this week have gone already? You're just still back of there choosing backgrounds. I love it. All right. So, um, let's do this. Work on your homework today. Tomorrow I'll be on but I'm not gonna request all of you to be there. If you have questions about any of these or you want me to help you on any of these, we'll use tomorrow's class to do that. So I'll have, an, I'll have a meeting open and you can just pop in if you, if you wanna be, if you wanna come in and ask, ask any questions. You do not have to be signed in tomorrow if you're okay. Now, if I start asking you a bunch of questions and you don't come tomorrow and you didn't do it, then I'm going to start requesting meetings. Okay, get it? So if you don't do the work and you don't ask, ask questions, then I'm going to start requiring you to be here all the time. Get it? So if I can't trust you to, to, to self-evaluate there, self-regulate, then you're going to get requested meetings. All right, sound fair? Okay, how many people we have in this class? Let me, hold on a minute, I'm gonna look at the roll sheet. Because remember again, once, once a week we have to meet to be able to do the roll. So we have... Nineteen students. Okay. Yep. And we have nineteen students here, so we will mark everybody present. Good. Excellent. All right. So, how does it look? You found it pretty easy sliding back into the routine. Yeah. 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 Practice them a little bit, and make sure you remember. You're just gonna be solving each, the, when you have those sets of parentheses like that, you're just gonna solve each one. How do you find the y-intercept? That's the point where x equals always what number? Zero, Zero. right? Because if it's on the y-axis, then that it can't move right or left any. So the y-intercept, you just plug in x equals zero, yeah? Once you have that axis of symmetry, then you just plug that into the x value to be able to find the y, and that'll tell you that where the other point for the turning point, wherever it is. If it's negative, it opens downward. Positive, it opens upward. Okay. I have a question. Yes, you bet. What can I help um, you? With? Are you going to upload um, this parabola page to OneNote? Absolutely. Or? Yes. Well, not okay. not to OneNote, but I'll put it on the YouTube channel. Oh, oh you mean oh. the book pages? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm going to put the book page.